I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has life in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend, and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Please be seated. Welcome to Faith Episcopal Church today. My name is Reverend Tom. I'm the priest in charge here. And we have gathered to remember and to celebrate the life of our friend, brother, husband, father, Ken Shepherd. So welcome to all of you who are here with us in the sanctuary and those who are joining online. The Episcopal liturgy for burial is one that's characterized by hope, by celebration in Christ's resurrection, not making grief unchristian, but remembering that nothing, not even death, can separate us from the love of God. And so as we remember Ken, we can remember also that love of God, that God held for him, the love that Ken shared with us and that love that we share together today in his memory and in the presence and sight of God. Would you please stand with me as you're able? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Ken, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, Deal graciously with Janie and the family in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Yeah. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the church in Ephesus. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you will know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time, I'm gonna invite Lonnie Shepherd to come up and share the first reflection. My brother, my mentor, he's gonna be missed, that's for sure. Um, so many great memories about my brother. Um, you know, um, Eagle Scout. Yeah, it's, what an accomplishment that was. Um, spent a lot of time camping, hiking in the Sierras and Mammoth and all that. And hiked uh, lots of hiking, lots of hiking. <clears throat> um, so, um, yeah, those are great memories. Um, he really, uh, Delta Chi, I mean, he, he, he took me, you know, he helped me out a lot. I mean, took me to Delta Chi and, you know, and he, he was just, he was just a great mentor towards me. Um, we, um, he really got into, into the, the, the RC gliding, making gliders. So he had this great idea that He'll take Lonnie and uh, we'll build a glider together. Well, those things are made out of balsa wood. And um, I think I was like 14 or 15 and it takes a long time to make those gliders. So we, we spent many, many, many hours building this glider. And um, we used to go out in, uh, we lived in Long Beach at the time. And we used to go out to this place off, uh, off the Pacific Coast Highway and fly our gliders. and. Um, I wasn't very good at it, uh, and he, uh, we're over this, we're like on the, on the ocean, and we're over the cliff, and I would get in trouble, and I'd hand him my remote control, and I'd go, hey, bro, I'm, 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 I need help, it's getting out of control, and he'd, he'd get it back on track for me, and we'd get in, in these thermals, and I'd learn all this stuff about, you know, these thermal and uplift and all that. Well, one time we're out there and I'm, I go, hey, I'm getting in trouble. He goes, well, so am I. I don't have time to take, I don't have time. And, 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 and I go, well, and we're on Pacific Coast Highway. The glider lands on Pacific Coast Highway. A big truck comes and this smashes my glider to smithereens. Gone. Those are the end of my gliding days. Um, you know, and when we were building this glider, you know, the, the fun part was putting this skin on. I forgot what it's called. Huh? Mono coat, right? So the funnest part is going to pick out the colors. Well, Kenny, you know, the, you know, he's so smart. His was bright orange and yellow and stuff like that. Well, at the time, my favorite color was like light blue and baby blue, which I don't think is a good color for an airplane in the sky, you know, kind of blends in. But anyway, it got smashed to smithereens and, and that, was, that was the end of that. But um, yeah, you know, uh, he's going to be missed because, you know, he's the, he, you know, what there's Radio Shack. He worked at Radio Shack back in the seventies for so many years. And, 
you know, all, all this stuff. And, and if you want to talk trash, he's the guy, you know, the McKinley 1400 with the uh, propane powered, whatever. I'm probably saying it wrong, John, but sorry about that. You know, I, but anyway, he knew that trash truck and we used to go in there and we, he'd show me the trash. Truck. And my question was like, always, you know, well, what if you got stuck in the, would you get killed by the thing? And he's like, oh, well, you know. anyway, um, yeah. And, and just all the technical stuff and, you know, uh, all the, uh, yeah, like voltmeters and amperage and, and all this kind of, you know, all this kind of, the guy, he just like, he's the, he was my guy, man. He was the guy I went to for all that stuff helped me install solar panels on my van. And um, uh, I mean, yeah, so definitely be missed anyway. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. This is Andy Hawes coming to you from Kansas. I wish I could have been at the service. Good evening, everybody. This is Andy Hawes coming to you from Kansas. I wish I could have been at the service tonight, but unfortunately can't make it. Um, I am Janie's little brother and Ken's brother-in-law. And I met Ken when I was about eight years old. Uh, Ken was staying at the Delta Chi house next door to us. And it was summer, so nobody was there and it was hot. I don't think the house had any air conditioning. Uh, I decided to go over and meet him. And so in the process of doing this, we struck up a conversation. And one of the things he said to me was, so do you have any sisters? I said, well, I have three, one of which is, is way too young. Uh, the other two, maybe, you know? <laughs> and so I tell him about my second oldest sister, but what happened in the end was mom has him over for dinner. He and Janie meet and the rest is history. So. I am the reason that whole relationship ever happened, and you are welcome. Uh, when they got married in the backyard, I subsequently bought the marriage license. So that's one of my fond remembrances of Kenny Boo Boo. That's what our son Nick would call him, and he's actually listed in my phone as Kenny Boo Boo. Uh, Kenny Boo Boo was a hell of a guy. He loved coming to Kansas because there was a place in Lawrence, uh, Master Music, where he used to go and just drool over all the guitars and things. They were a Martin, they are a Martin guitar dealer. He used to love to go do all that stuff. And it was fun to hear stories when he came back about what he had learned. Uh, one of the things I really loved about Ken was that Ken was instantly taken to K-State. You know, not being a native, not being from Kansas, boy, he sure took to it. Uh, he'd go to football games with us. Uh, he'd cry during the playing of the alma mater, just like I would. So. Yeah, Ken was a hell of a guy. I'm really going to miss him. Thanks for being here tonight. I'm sure the whole family really appreciates your presence. Good afternoon. My name is John Shelby. Ken was many things to many people. He was a good husband, a good father, and certainly a good a grandfather to those wonderful uh, grandbabies uh, down here in front of me. He was a fraternity brother, a fraternity mentor, a leader, an advisor, and a good friend. To me, he was a friend, mentor, and someone that I was proud to call my fraternity brother. And here's a little bit about Ken and the fraternity. As, uh, as many of you probably know, he joined uh, the CSU Long Beach chapter of Delta Chi fraternity back in 1975, later graduated from Long Beach in 1977. Ken loved the Delta Chi fraternity. After graduation, he accepted a job and went to work for the International Headquarters Office as a traveling field man. He made that big move from Southern California to Iowa City, Iowa where the Delta Chi headquarters uh, office was uh, located at that time. 
As a staff member for the HQ, he traveled the country going to different colleges and universities, working with or starting up local Delta Chi chapters. One of his assignments, as you may guess by now, was Manhattan, Kansas, the home of K-State. Uh, apparently, the chapter there had some problems and Ken was sent in to fix those problems and hopefully save the chapter. Well, he was not successful in turning the chapter around. However, he did meet this wonderful family that we know who lived near the chapter house. And as you just heard, this is where he met his wife, Jamie, and the rest is history. After marriage, they lived in Southern California for a while where Ken took a job in commercial banking and ultimately went through the bank's credit training program. He was then transferred up to Sacramento, to the Sacramento area, where he and Janie set up roots in the city of Elk Grove, which is just a few miles south of uh, Sacramento. Ken couldn't stay away from Delta Chi long. When asked if he would take the role on as the chapter advisor for the newly organized group at the California State University, Sacramento, he of course said yes. This is when I first met Ken back in 1983. The Shepherds uh, at their house uh, hosted a retreat for chapter leadership one Saturday. Uh, about 10 of us undergraduates were sitting around listening to Ken talk, and all of a sudden he started yelling, Shelby, come here. Shelby, come here. Now, if you recall, my last name is Shelby. And I sat there thinking, why is this guy yelling at me? Well, come to find out they had a dog named Shelby and Shelby was getting into something and Ken was trying to get the dog's attention. This was the start of a long-term relationship with Ken as Delta Chi is the foundation. Ken and I became quick friends, uh, but there was a rocky beginning. Uh, Ken, as our Delta Chi chapter advisor, wouldn't always grant me creative authority. For example, as an undergraduate, I wanted to have female mud wrestling as a rush event. Ken, with his infinite wisdom, said no. The city of Sacramento required that the chapter obtain a liquor license in order to serve beer at their events. So we got one in the names of Ken Shepard, Ed Shuck, and Toshi Yamamoto without their knowledge. Needless to say, Ken was pissed. They all were pissed, uh, but, uh, but it cemented our relationship. Ken dedicated his life to serving the fraternity, both as an undergraduate and as an alumnus. He touched so many people in so many different places. As mentioned, he was a past traveling uh, staff member from 1978 to 1979. He was a member of the Housing Committee three different times, 1991 uh, through 1997, 2007 through 2009, and 2017 up until his passing. He was an advisor for the Sacramento chapter, the UC Davis chapter, and his home chapter of Long Beach. He also served as a member of the International Board of Regents from 1980 to 1982. He was a donor to the Delta Chi Educational Foundation and a multi-year recipient of the Meritorious Service Award. And in 2006, he was selected into uh, one of Delta Chi's highest honors, which is the Order of the White Carnation. Ken and many times Janie attended uh, 17 biennial conventions. Now those were consecutive uh, 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 years that they went. That's a, a time span of about 34 years. That's a, that's a big commitment. Uh, and uh, the, uh, um, they had signed up for the 18th uh, convention this summer in St. Louis, the morning of his passing. This is Ken, a Delta Chi with a very impressive resume and many, many accomplishments. Delta Chi is a better fraternity for having known Ken for nearly 50 years. Ken will be missed. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Geisler. I had the privilege of working with Ken for over 30 years at Davis Waste Removal. 
Um, he was the controller and I was the operations manager and together we managed the day-to-day -day operation of the company. I first met Ken in 1987 when he first came to work for us. Um, at the time he'd been working for San Juan Bank and the owners of our company hired him to be our controller. Uh, Ken came in and made immediate improvements in many areas of the company. And uh, unfortunately though, after about four years, he was offered an opportunity back in the banking side of the business and went back to work in banking. Uh, a few years later, uh, where after we'd had numerous problems trying to replace him, the owners reached out to him and asked him if he'd be willing to come back. And luckily for us, he said yes. Um, Ken came back and jumped in with both feet, uh, upgrading our computer systems, our accounting systems, and everything else that had to do with the administration of the company. Uh, over the years, he implemented many new programs and systems that improved the, our efficiency and made us a better company and contributed greatly to our success. Um, over the years, Ken and I got to know each other very well. We spent many hours sitting together, talking about life. I'll make it. Um, and um, our lives and our upbringing and our families we shared many things together. Um, and most importantly, um, as other folks have said, Ken was a great friend to me and to everyone that we worked with. Um, he was great to be around. He had an amazing sense of humor. Um, one instance comes to mind that I'll never forget. Um, I used to call him Shep or the little shepherd boy terms of endearment. And one morning I was sitting in my office, uh, it was early, like six o'clock, and no one else was there. And he came walking by my door and I said, hey, Shep, what's shaking? And without missing a beat, he said, all four cheeks and a couple of chins. <laughs> Ken knew who he was. He was unpretentious and uh, very self-deprecating, but he was never mean. He had a great sense of humor and uh, he made it a joy to, to work with. Um, as others have said, um, Ken was a great guy. He did many, many, many important things for our company to make us a success. And without him, I don't think we would have been as successful. Um, but more than that, He uh, was a great friend and obviously he'll be missed very much.
I love these reflections and this video. Um, you can just feel so much of Ken's love and goodness and joy and beauty radiating in everything we're, we're seeing and hearing. We heard a lesson from the Gospel of John a little bit ago, and there's a line that it started with that really stood out for me. Jesus said to those who were gathered with him, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And I, I kind of wonder how that lands on you today. Some of you might find that very comforting, very encouraging. Some of you might find it kind of annoying because it can sound almost a little trite, you know, and like almost a little bit unreasonable at a time like this, a time like this when we are so aware of our personal loss and also the tremendous grief of our country and of our world. Do not let your hearts be troubled. When the world gets kind of turned upside down and inside out, I, I can't help but wonder, what is it that Jesus meant by that? Because I'm certain he did not mean to say, don't grieve. Because those who love big, grieve big. I think it might be helpful to know a little bit of kind of what was going on when Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. He was preparing his closest friends for his own death, a death that was horrific, and a death that seemed much, much too soon. It might also be helpful to know that Jesus was speaking to a people who lived in a society in which they were oppressed and in which there was tremendous violence. And Jesus was speaking to his beloved friends, folks who were about to become hugely disillusioned because things were not gonna go at all the way they expected or the way they wanted. So whatever Jesus means by do not let your hearts be trouble, it's definitely not something superficial or trite that he's saying then or, or to us now. This is kind of cracking me up. <laughs> right? Isn't it good to have just this much life in our midst? This is a reminder of um, Ken's legacy and, and the life that continues. Well, whatever do not let your hearts be troubled means, I think it means something that's kind of revolutionary. I think it means something incredibly radical. And I think it means something incredibly liberating in the only sense of liberation that even matters. I think not letting our hearts be troubled means living courageously in the midst of tremendous anxiety and fear, including the courage it takes just to be here today. Yeah. And the courage it takes to share reflections on, on someone we love. I think do not let your hearts be troubled means to be committed to being peacemakers in a world that so easily sucks us into despair. I think it means to push back on the tide of hatred and violence with our integrity, recommitting every single day to live from our highest values and our best selves. And I think not letting our hearts be troubled also means experiencing our grief fully fully, and letting it carve out places in our hearts that are big enough for the love of God to fill. I think not letting our hearts get troubled 
means trusting that God is active in the trajectory of our lives, no matter how turned upside down and inside out things get. To use a metaphor that I think Ken might appreciate, if our lives are like the ocean, then not letting our hearts be troubled is like rooting our hearts in the stillness of the deep water. You know, there's still all that's going on on the surface. And sometimes those waves can be pretty overwhelming. And yet always also accessible to us is the stillness of the deep. That's not letting our hearts be troubled. Many of us, all of us, felt stunned by Ken's death. And one thing that I find comforting is that even when we feel completely unprepared for change or for loss, God is not unprepared. We heard in that lesson from the Gospel of John, Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. I go to prepare a place for you. The spirit of God is always working in us and through us, leading us where we need to be to a place being prepared for us by our loving creator. And that leading often doesn't look like we want it to look. That leading often doesn't look like we expect it to look. But we are led in love by love all through our lives and including through our deaths. <laughs> Ken was, was definitely led in love. <laughs> he enjoyed certainly his share of laughter. And I think all of us who are, are gathered here in the sanctuary and also on the, the Zoom YouTube thingy, um, all of us have been really touched by Ken's love, by his way of being in the world. In our lesson from Ephesians, we heard, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. From whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. There's there's a way in which our family relationships are meant to show us what the love of God is like. There's a way in which our family relationships are meant to kind of put flesh on God's love. And those family relationships, they might be the ones that we're born into. They might be the ones that we choose or the ones that are kind of chosen for us. Those family relationships when the love is, is not perfect, but good enough. They help us to catch the reality of God's love for us. And when I, I think of the love that's experienced through Ken, I, I think particularly of his, his fatherhood. There's a, a way in which Ken's fatherhood definitely reflects the fatherhood of God. Janie told me that during their very first date, after, was it Andy, who takes credit for you two meeting? <laughs> so after Andy had worked his magic, <laughs> and they were on their very first date, Janie told me that they had a conversation about wanting to adopt children, which is amazing from the very beginning of your relationship together. God was working through you already to intentionally form this family. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. I go and prepare a place for you. From the, the very beginning of your relationship, God was preparing a place for Miles and for Laurel. And I, I think there's a way in which that experience of having adopted children and being adopted children teaches you about what it means to be adopted children of God. Because each of us is that. Each of us is 
chosen by God with intention and is precious. I understand also from Janie that Laurel and Miles have an airplane day, a day in which they each celebrate their arrival from South Korea. And I, I hear there's even delicious airplane cookies. Excellent. I can't help but wonder if maybe part of what we're doing here today is, is celebrating Ken's version of an airplane day. It feels like a departure on our end of things, but we also know it's an arrival from another perspective. And I remember that Ken was up to something airplaney on his very last day among us. He was doing something he loved. He was flying a glider plane. And he was also doing something else that I think is kind of Kenish that he was kind of ticked off because he lost his glider plane in some blackberry bushes. <laughs> what I gotta say, Ken might have lost his plane that day, but God certainly did not lose Ken's plane. The spirit of God has been going before Ken, preparing a place for him all through his life and through his death as well. So even as we grieve and grieve deeply, we thank God for the tremendous, precious gift of Ken in our lives. We thank God for all the love and the laughter and the goodness and the beauty that we experienced through him. And we thank God for preparing the way for Ken and preparing the way for all of us as well. So to borrow a little bit from that letter to the Ephesians that we heard, my prayer for all of us is that we may have the power to comprehend with our whole beings, not just with our minds, but with our whole beings, with all of the saints like Ken who have gone before us, we might have the power to comprehend the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of the love of Christ so that we may be filled with the fullness of God and that we may truly live with untroubled hearts. Amen. Let us now stand and join our voices with all the saints around the world and those who've gone before us, saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life everlasting. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For our brother Kim, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Kim and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Give our well-loved brother eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. <clears throat> he was nourished with the body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Ken, who was reborn by water and the spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs> Yes. And 
Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Your sorrow and pain are no more. Neither sigh, life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Ken. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Beloved, blessing of God, one holy, glorious, and undivided trinity, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Let's be to God. Thank you.